In the heart of North Carolina, shrouded in whispers of mystery, lies Roanoke Island. Here, amidst the rustle of windswept pines and the murmur of the Atlantic, unfolds one of America's most enduring enigmas, the lost colony of Roanoke, in 1585, driven by dreams of riches and a foothold in the New World, Sir Walter Raleigh sent Ralph Lane and a band of English settlers to Roanoke. They built a fort, christened it Fort Raleigh, and planted the seeds of what they hoped would be the first permanent English colony in America, but harsh realities soon set in. Food shortages plagued the colony, relations with the local Croatan tribe grew tense, and Lane, disillusioned, returned to England with a passing ship. Left behind, a small contingent under Richard Hacklett struggled to survive, only to be rescued and brought back to England by Sir Francis Drake in 1586, undeterred, Raleigh made another attempt in 1587. This time, John White, an artist and surveyor, led a larger group of 117 colonists, including his pregnant daughter Eleanor Dare and her newborn granddaughter Virginia, the first English child born on American soil, for three years, Roanoke thrived. White, however, had returned to England for supplies. When he finally landed back on the island in 1590, he was met with an unsettling silence. The fort was dismantled, houses deserted, and the only clues left behind were the word Crotone carved on a post and the letter CRO etched on a tree. What happened to the lost colony? Theories abound. Did they assimilate with the Croatan tribe, move inland, succumb to disease or conflict, or even fall victim to piracy? Archaeological evidence offers tantalizing hints, but no definitive answers. The carved word Crotone on the post is the strongest indicator. The Croatan tribe lived further south on Hatteras Island. Some believe the colonists merged with them, citing cultural similarities between the Croatan and later indigenous groups in the region, evidence of a large group joining the Croatan is scant. Some historians argue language barriers and cultural differences would have made assimilation difficult, Roanoke Island may have faced resource depletion or conflict with the local Roanoke tribe. Moving inland could have offered fresh resources and escape from tensions, archaeological traces of a large group moving inland are lacking. It's possible they scattered in smaller groups making them harder to track. Roanoke faced harsh conditions and potential encounters with hostile tribes. Outbreaks of disease or violent conflict could have decimated the colony, no conclusive evidence of widespread disease or massacres has been found. Some experts argue these wouldn't leave the fort entirely abandoned, Spanish pirates frequented the Atlantic, and Roanoke's strategic location made it vulnerable. Some theorize the colonists were captured or raided, no concrete proof of pirate involvement exists. Additionally, it's unclear why pirates would leave behind the word Crotone, some historians propose internal conflicts within the colony could have led to disbandment or even self-inflicted harm. Recent studies comparing DNA of modern groups with possible descendants of the colonists offer intriguing, but inconclusive results, finds like tools and pottery in Hatteras and further inland hint at possible movement of small groups, but don't confirm the fate of the entire colony. Though centuries have passed, the Roanoke mystery continues to captivate us. It's a story of hope and ambition dashed, of human resilience tested against the wild unknown. And it serves as a powerful reminder of the fragility of existence, the secret sometimes buried beneath the sands of time, as the sun dips below the horizon, casting long shadows across Roanoke Island, the questions remain. Where did the lost colony go? What became their fate? Perhaps one day, the whispers of the wind will carry the answer, finally resolving the enduring puzzle of Roanoke.